Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I am mixing Lucas Cobalt Lucas Cobalt Turquoise, yes, sorry. Which is PB28. It's Daniel Smith Perline Red, which is PR 178. And maybe if I have room next to here, I might mix the Perline Red with Core Cobalt Turquoise. Which is a PG50 though, so it's a different pigment. So I don't know, it depends on how much space I have and if I'm gonna do it, if I'm doing it or not, for comparison reasons. And the reason why I've decided to use the Lucas Cobalt Turquoise today is because I like to call it my problem child. It's, you can see, I've got both tubes here. This is a 15 milliliter tube of Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith Perlene Red and next to it you can see the huge chunky cobalt turquoise glucose tube because that's 24 milliliters so it's nine milliliters more than the Daniel Smith and I've got lots of it obviously and I need to I need to find uses for it to find ways to use it and I can show you in a second. Just let me do my mingle swatch here so that it has time to mingle around a little bit and get together and make some interesting mixes here. Actually, I will show you what I want to show you when I'm done this, I've done this watching because that'll give it time to dry a little bit. Right, let's get the tubes out of the way. Oh, well, they're kind of here too. Way my page down, but I'm not sure. Leave them here, I guess. I think I will give the teardrop, no raindrop, not teardrops. It's not that bad. They're raindrops. I'll give them another try. So I'm, I think I'm going to try, I'm going to try to get like some sort of maybe a gradient from fairly cobalt turquoise heavy to fairly perlene red heavy, but I'm not sure how well I will manage that. And yeah, the reason why I've decided to swatch these two, or mix these two, is because I I have actually mixed them before, like quite often in the future. In the future? What? Quite often in the past. When I when I do these kind of things, when I mix two pigments, I haven't necessarily mixed them before. So it's as much a surprise to me as to anybody else what happens. But I have mixed these earlier today. And it quite kind of I quite liked how they mixed. I think I just picked up a bit of surplus fiber. That sometimes happens with my with cardi paper paper, especially in these sketchbooks, because there's bits breaking off of the deckled edges. So yeah, I've mixed this. I've mixed this before earlier today, this afternoon, and I've played around with this a little bit in my sketchbook earlier, and that's that's what I'm going to show you once I'm done here with the swatching. Because I like the color of the cobalt turquoise, but I'm not sure I like the consistency of the paint, and especially I don't like how it how the paint dries when you use it. 
and I think I can show you in my sketchbook. So I've mixed a bit more of the cobalt turquoise and so I'm going back up. And the color these two make is lovely. And I mean, you can see there's quite a lot of granulation as well. I'm uh, pretty sure we'll be see, able to see it here in the Mangle's watch, but in these as well, there's quite pronounced uh, granulation from the cobalt turquoise. None from the perylene red, because the perylene red is not a granulating paint, but I think when you have one paint that really qu granulates quite a lot, it doesn't really matter what you mix it with, because you've got one paint that granulates a lot, all of your mixes are going to be heavily granulating, or at least if you only mix in a little bit of the granulating paint. I guess we'll see with this, these maybe because there's not that much of the cobalt turquoise in here now. But you will still get some granulation, so you will always get some visual interest. So I guess this is one of the things that I've learned since I've started to try and replicate super granulating colors and make my own and everything that yes, if you mix two granulating colors, the effects can be amplified sometimes, depends on what paints and on the granulation though. And you only need one paint that granulates a lot and you can make lots and lots of granulating mixes with that. So, in theory, you can probably get away with a fairly small number of granulating paints and still make lots and lots of interesting granulating mixes with all your other normal paints. And I mean, I think if you, when you, when you buy a set, like a 12 or 24 set of uh, paint, traditional legacy paint manufacturer, there are always going to be, it's most likely there's always going to be one or two colors in there that granulate anyway. Because you, for instance, ultramarine is almost, is almost going to be present in any standard palette and most gran uh, ultramarines granulate a little bit at least. And yeah, I mean, and these down here, no, you can see a little bit of the, uh, the here. This one doesn't really show much, but I can see a little bit in here. And even these ones that are fairly red leaning, they all show some granulation. So you will get granulation in there and I think that's probably good like that. I might try just a little bit of perlin red with the core cobalt turquoise just to compare them. It's not entirely clean. Who? It's cool, isn't it? It's Pratt. Very nice. Okay, and here I'm going to start the other way around because I've got a lot of perylene red here. And 
maybe a little bit too much water. So first impressions are that the core cobalt turquoise is not as strong as the Lucas cobalt turquoise because the Lucas cobalt turquoise had no problem holding its own next to the Daniel Smith Paradine Red, but this makes the Paradine Red certainly seems to be more powerful at the moment. So I just grabbed quite a lot of more of the cobalt turquoise because I just want to see how they compare when they're dry. And it looks like these two, they mix more and they make, they actually make this lovely violet gray. Get that a little bit with the Lucas Cobalt Turquoise as well, but because it separates out so much, it doesn't it doesn't end up look, uh, looking quite so violet gray and i mean that in itself isn't one thing one is better and one is worse it's just it doing slightly different things okay okay i have not mixed these two before and but I'm glad I actually got around to doing that uh, A2, see them side by side like this. And also, because I think this is like a really, really rather nice combination here. And at the moment, I have almost no idea what I would use that for. But if I put my mind to it, I might find something certainly should try to find a use for it because it's lovely. It's a lovely mix. So do, do let me know in the comments which one, which of these two mixes you prefer and what you would use them for if you have any ideas because at the moment I'm drawing a bit of a blank, quite honestly, but they're lovely. I do really like, right, like them. There, okay. Let's give them a moment to dry and I'll grab my sketchbook, my own sketchbook. So here's my Han Müller Academy sketchbook. And here are some of the swatches I did earlier. And here's the one with Perlene Red. And what I really wanted to see basically is I'm pretty sure you, I hope the camera picks this up. I can't really quite tell, but here in the beginning, it seems nice and vibrant and not too bad. But the more cobalt turquoise I've mixed in, the kind of chalkier the mix got. And as it, I think it got worse as it dried as well didn't look quite so chalky when it was wet but once it dried and it did that for the for, for the other mixes as well the more cobalt turquoise I mixed in almost everywhere the chalkier it looked and I wanted to test if that's just because this is cellulose paper and it just looks worse on the cellulose paper or if it does the same thing on the cotton paper and I think it's not quite as visible and as pronounced at the moment from just momentarily looking at it and let's see how oh, they are fairly dry not quite yet i'll give this a little moment longer to dry but yeah i wanted to know if how it looks when you mix these two on cotton paper paint on cotton paper so as always the mingle swatches aren't completely dry yet but some of the raindrops are and i think I'm gonna try and see if I can bring it up to the camera. I think I forgot to set the autofocus, so it should be okay. Oh, 
yeah it looks like it's focusing doesn't it so these don't seem to look quite as chalky as the mix on the um, cellulose paper did oh here's another thing though that you can see i think you can see this it, it looks kind of looks like the binder has yellowed a little bit i think that must be what it is because i've I've always found this when I mix the cobalt turquoise, especially when I mix it quite watery, that it has these yellowy brown edges. And I think that must be the binder, uh, the gum arabic settling out there. I've never had that with any other paint. It's only the Lucas cobalt turquoise. And it can't be that old because before, before they were taken over by um, Fila Group, the Lucas Cobalt Turquoise was made in Germany, it's now made in England, and it used to be PG50, and now it's PB28, the Cobalt, uh, the cobalt Turquoise is. So, but still, yeah, I think, I think the camera picks this up, these yellow edges around, yeah, at the edges, yes, around the edges, obviously, that's where the edges are. But you can see there's some quite nice, nice granulation but now that they're dry, they look the, the 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 kind of granulation you get also looks quite similar. When I look at this one and this one, there are a few bits here as well, or maybe in this one even even more so, where there's quite a few pronounced bits of turquoise that have settled out and clapped together, but. I think still overall this one mixes a little bit, these two mix a little bit better together, but you can you can see the separation. There's some definite definite separation happening in the dried mixes. And in terms of you, I think well maybe this one is a little bit cooler than the the core is a little bit cooler than the Lucas is. Uh, again, that might not be, uh, maybe it's not all that surprising. This is a blue pigment and this is a green pigment. So maybe the green one would be, but then again, no, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> but yeah, if you would just, I'll put it down. If you just saw this bit in the middle, I don't even necessarily think you would realize that you've got two different mixes here. Because there are, the difference isn't this as pronounced now that they've dried, but there's a tiny little, it's a tiny little bit different. But they're both very nice mixes. I still have no idea what I would use them for. But I'm going to try and find a use for them. Do let me know if you have any ideas. But yeah, so at least, at least I know that this, chalkiness issue that I, have, that I had earlier in my cellulose sketchbook doesn't seem to be as bad here in my Cardi sketchbook and the Cardi sketchbook is 100% cotton and I mean you'd have to, I'd have to see what, what happens on other cotton paper as well maybe but at least I know on this paper it looks all right which is good because as I said look at the size of that tube I'm gonna have to find some way to use it up yeah, well, but anyway, thank you very much for joining me today. Please give the video a like and consider subscribing to my channel because it really helps. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye now. Bye.